If you have your A-level biology paper one exam coming up, I'm going to tell you some things that genuinely helped me so much to get that A star at the end and some hacks as well within your exam that will give you some guaranteed marks every single time, especially to do with those practical questions and those evaluate questions and some other things I'm going to mention. So without wasting your time, I'm just going to go straight into it. Now firstly, let me give you a rundown of this paper. So I did AQA, so I'll tell you exactly what happened in AQA, but if you did other examples, the tips I'm going to mention today will still be of use and still be helpful. But the first thing is very specific to AQA and their papers, I'm not sure if other examples have this but with paper one you have four topics and they're the year one topics and obviously the first thing I want you to know is the content really well go through every single topic and just flick through every single chapter one last time just making sure that you know everything that everything there is within your memory and if you are lost in how you can do that go to the specification. I'll link some checklists down below in the description as well so you can go through one by one. Think to yourself, do I know this, do I not? And that way you can assure yourself that you know the content because that's always your stage one. But remember with biology, knowing the content isn't going to get you that far because those mark schemes are terrible. The things they want you to say sometimes are just stupid. So you have to learn biology the way AQA or whatever example you're doing wants you to learn it. So the next thing I want you to do is to go to the very end of every paper one past paper that you've done or you haven't done yet and memorize those long mark questions. There should be 15 marks of just pure content at the very end of every paper one that just require you to state things. So for example, very, very common six mark question is a question on translation and it's just the same mark scheme every single time where it just asks you to list the different things that happen during translation of a protein. So you talk about the ribosomes, you talk about your codon, your anticodon, talking about the specific amino acid on the tRNA molecule. All of that stuff is all very important to know exactly what the steps are. It's something that you you might get wrong the first time but once you've done the practice once you've memorized the mark scheme for it you're never going to get wrong again so what i want you to do is to look at every single paper and memorize those mark schemes at the end because they're the type of questions that will always come up and when you go into your exam go straight to the very last question and pick up those 15 marks straight away you should be able to get all 15 just like that because they're not hard you might lose a mark max but you're really trying to get those marks because all they are is knowing the content and if you've revised you should be able to know the content all you just need to do is those mark schemes and memorizing them so that you can ensure that you won't lose silly marks for just not mentioning like the word complementary or not mentioning ATP make sure you memorize those mark schemes especially of the mark schemes at the very end of the paper okay so we've already hopefully secured 15 marks just like that okay that's a guaranteed 15 marks that you can just get straight away and the next thing I want to tell you guys is something to do with the evaluate questions now. I'm going to tell you some hacks. I will guarantee you marks right now. Like when you go into that exam, you will get some marks just straight away from the things I tell you. So the first thing I want you to do is that if an evaluate question, you usually get many of these, not only in paper one, but in paper two and paper three specifically as well. So the first thing I want to mention is that let's say you get some data in front of you. Maybe it's sort of a practical, maybe it's just some data you've never seen before from something. And it asks you to compare two different things. It might be a bar chart and it's asking you to compare two different variables or something like that, okay? The first thing you want to look at is have they done a stats test? You should be familiar with stats test, like t-test. Importantly, the p-value, making sure it's less than 0.05 so that you can reject null hypothesis, remember all of that? What you're looking for is a stats test being done because if they're asking you to evaluate, remember you're looking at the good things and the bad things. So if you're looking at it and you see no stats test being done and to know if you've done a stats test, you're looking for standard deviations in a graph or you're looking for a p-value. That will tell you there's a stats test being done but if there isn't and they don't mention it in the question easy mark you can just say no stats test was used so it's not reliable you don't have sufficient information to reject your null hypothesis now let me give you some other really common things sample size always comes up so sometimes you only have like 10 people in the trial and that's useless you don't have enough or the time frame it might just be done over two weeks or something you need a long time for a good experiment to take place over so that makes it unreliable as well maybe even the types of people you're using so if it's all one age range that's not good or one gender you need to be able to have a good variety that represents the population another thing that's quite common is if you're talking about drugs or you're talking about anything that you're giving to a population to see their outcomes you have to always have a control group and you have to also make sure that it's safe that there's no side effects that are being taken place and sometimes they mention this sometimes they don't by the way I've just given you a load of things that you can chuck into your evaluate question there's gonna be definitely something in those they don't do and they're expecting you to be able to point out so just remember all of those and now you straight away have an idea of the things to look for that will be a problem for them okay so you know the negatives now in terms of looking for the good things from an evaluation you're just simply stating what you see in front of you so if you have a group of people that got a treatment and a group of people 
people that didn't get a treatment and you see that the people with the treatment end up surviving for longer for example then automatically that's something you can say is a good thing about the experiment and then the bad things you can talk about no stats test maybe they're using one group of people you're not taking into account side effects anything like that will fall under the negative side so just like that evaluate questions should be free marks as I've just mentioned to you there's nothing difficult about them it's very much always the same thing over and over again and if you do some past paper questions as well if you look through some of the evaluate questions in the past you're going to realize that it is very much the same thing every year so you don't need to worry too much about these ones now talking about the content and the rest of the paper what do you need to know for this exam as i mentioned before go over the specification go through it one by one make sure that you know everything right but then you want to also make sure that you do topic questions based on every topic there's only four topics i mean they're big topics but you want to do enough topic practice on every single one individually to make sure that you know everything within those topics and how they present different questions and what type of things they usually ask for so what you really want to be doing right now whether you have a day before your exam whether it's the day of your exam you just want to look at as many questions as possible and you want to look at as many mark schemes as possible so if it's literally hours before your exam I would say focus more on those 15 mark sections so that all those six markers and things just get them into your head one last time if you have time before this exam I would recommend instead to focus more on those topic questions focus more on the past papers I don't want you to sit down and do a full length past paper you could do one or two but you don't want to spend most of your time on that you want to spend more time just looking at questions individually and looking at topic questions that's more useful in this last minute stage and the last thing I want to also say is the required practicals please do not neglect them because they're always going to be some marks if you know the practical really well you will get the marks for them so in terms of the different practicals that you need to know I'll just put them here so you don't need to know the full methods of every single practical but there are a few practicals that require a bit more knowledge on the method itself than just simply knowing how it's taken place so basically what I mean by that is that there are some practicals that you need to know why they do certain steps okay so for example microscope practical when you're doing the onion cell or whatever you need to make sure that it's very thin okay so you macerate it you make it thin because you want the light to pass through right that's a very common question type that usually likes to come up there are some practicals though where you need to know the method I will put some information on the screen right now about these practicals and what you need to know most important thing you want to do with these practicals and to get better at them is to know why they do every step this is something I mentioned in my GCSE video as well because it's the same thing you want to make sure that you look at the methods of every single practical and just think to yourself why are they doing this what could be the possible implications of this what things are they controlling that's also very important to remember and you want to also think about the topic around whatever the practical is because usually what they like to do is they like to start off with a practical and if it's in a certain topic so for example in the osmosis topic the potato osmosis practical they're going to then start asking you questions about osmosis or if i'm talking about cell membrane permeability that practical the beetroot one that one can then branch into questions about cell membranes and talking about how the cell membranes can be damaged and things like that and then talking about the structure of the cell membranes very easy way to segue into a topic area within itself so another way you can get better at practicals is to get better at the topic within them because the more you know about the topics that are based in the practical then you're more likely to get the questions based on that practical correct my main thing for you to take away is firstly go through a specification one by one make sure you know everything secondly go to the last couple questions and memorize those mark schemes for every single paper thirdly your evaluate questions remember the really common things that usually like to come up for example stats test another thing i haven't mentioned is correlations not causation that can sometimes be one age control group time frame gender any of those things almost always come up and fourthly the required practicals themselves know them in and out be able to know exactly why they're doing the different things but the methods themselves are not as important apart from the ones that i mentioned on the screen i just want to say good luck for this exam and i'll see you very soon hopefully in the paper two video so bye for now and get revising